This course is called Design, Creation of Artifacts in Society. I want to start by talking about what design is and also talking about what artifacts are. So let's start with the artifact question first. The, the dictionary basically defines artifacts as human-made objects, and that distinguishes things, objects that are found in nature from objects that were created by humans. So for instance, this is a, a, a fossil of some fish that was created 55 million years ago in what is now the United States. This is an object, but it's not an artifact. It wasn't created by humans. Um, in contrast, <clears throat> this is an object, an ice cream scoop, the, the, the rather great ice cream scoop, by the way, made by Xylus. I highly recommend it. Um, and this ice cream scoop is, is an object, but clearly was made by humans. And so when we talk about artifacts, we're talking about objects that were made by, by humans. Now in this course, I'm going to use the definition of artifact, a definition of artifact that's quite broad. So while the dictionary defines artifacts as objects, that is physical objects, we're going to use artifact in a broader sense. And so we're going to include, for instance, software, services, business models, and processes as under the definition of artifact and not, not strictly those objects that are physical in nature. All right, so some examples of artifacts. So, so design is the creation of these artifacts. Some examples of artifacts, I've just talked about the ice cream scoop, but um, there are lots of other kinds of artifacts. For instance, there's the excellent salad, the insulata, Caprese, which was invented by someone allegedly on the island of Capri in the, in the south of Italy. Um, there, uh, this, is, this is the fine arts library at the University of Pennsylvania that was designed by the architect Frank Furness. That's also a nice artifact. Um, uh, this is an example. This is a staircase that, that is in the Apple store in Tokyo, Japan. That's also a, uh, an artifact. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is a little bit of software, a little bit of, of scheme code that is also an artifact. I don't mean the literal printout of the code, but rather the symbolic representation of that code is also an artifact, at least in the definition that we're using in this course, even though it's not a physical object per se. All right, so let's talk about uh, design and, and where these artifacts come from. And I'm going to use a, a simple example here, and I'm going to tell you a little story. It's, it's entirely fictitious, but, but uh, hopefully will illustrate the idea. So if we look at, at this fantastic artifact that is available in the 21st century in, in the developed world, um, this this didn't come from nowhere, and it would be very interesting to know or to think about where the first ice cream scoop came from and how it came about. So ice cream is, there's, there's differing views of the history of ice cream, but by at least the 10th century, uh, ice cream was available in Arab cities like Baghdad, Damascus, and Cairo. And it's pretty interesting to think, by the way, about where ice came from in Arab cities like Baghdad, Damascus, and Cairo in the 10th century. But we'll leave that for, for your own exploration and inquiry. Let's just go with the history or the alleged history that ice cream was readily available in the 10th century in those Arab cities. Now let's imagine the first ice cream maker. Uh, let's call her Tabia. And um, Tabia had, let me find Tabia's ice cream here. Tabia had this, this great stuff, right? This ice cream. And it was really good. Um, but she had this problem here, which is how am I going to serve this? And now, you know, probably she didn't think to use her hands. That, that was probably not the, the default. Um, and probably a good guess was Tabia had some kind of spoon. And um, so, so Tabia went to, to serve the ice cream and immediately discovered that 
even in the soft ice cream of the 10th century, a spoon was actually a pretty inadequate object for doing that job. Uh, in this case, it, 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 it didn't even manage to just put a dent in the ice cream uh, before it, it, it bent quite, quite uh, readily. Um, and so Tabia faced this problem, which is I got this great stuff. I need to figure out a better way to serve it. And my existing solutions are inadequate. And that created a gap that is a problem. And design is responsive to problems like that. And so you might imagine that Tavia said, all right, what am I going to do here? Um, let me think about that. And geez, maybe I could create some other kind of, of object. Um, I don't know, maybe... You know, I'll sketch out what that might look like. And, um, and gee, let me go, now that I've got uh, a, a conception of what some alternative might be, uh, let me now go and, and, uh, and, and, and make that. So I'll be right back. So Tavi comes back and has a, a realization of that object, in this case, the, the first ice cream scoop in our story is a, is, is, is a crude block of wood with an iron uh, tray on it that's, that's fastened with a couple of these nails that are pounded in the side. And this is now a much more sturdy, more shovel-like object. And let's see, let's see how it works, the first ice cream scoop. It creates this nice, well, maybe not so nice, but at least it doesn't bend and it creates, uh, it makes it a, a more ready uh, removal of the ice cream. All right, so that's, we might imagine a story that would explain uh, the first ice cream. And if you think about what, what just happened there, there was a problem, um, there's a gap, and then uh, Tavia was responsive to that gap conceived of some form and then executed that form in order, uh, produced that form in order to create an artifact. And that, in essence, is the, the, what design is. Uh, the the definition we're going to use in this course is that design is conceiving and giving form to artifacts that solve problems. All right? Design is conceiving and giving form to artifacts that solve problems. And design fits into an overall problem-solving process in which a gap is experienced. Design creates a plan for the conception and form of an artifact. And then there's some kind of production process that takes that plan and produces the artifact. I said that perhaps this scoop didn't really create a very nice form of the ice cream, as it didn't do its job extremely well. That's very typical in design of the first effort of the first version of an artifact that attempts to address a gap in a user experience. A very interesting question is how we as a society or we as individual designers go from this first effort to a highly refined and very successful product that really does address the gap quite well like this one. And that's going to be a subject of another module. I want you to think about a question based on what I've said about design. And that is what's really included in the human activity of design, what's in and what's, what's out. And to test your thinking on that, let me ask you about a specific example. There's a man named Scott Kim who creates very interesting graphics. Here's an example of one of his graphics in which the word Scott Kim, if flipped over, that is if viewed from upside down, spells the word inversions. And in fact, he calls this category of graphics that he creates inversions. Uh, here's another one of his inversions where the word Egyptian is, is spelled out no matter which direction you look at this. That is, whether you look at it from the top or whether you look at it from the bottom, it spells the word Egyptian. And th these are really interesting graphics. In fact, I've spent a lot of time in, in boring meetings or in boring events, uh, playing around with inversions. It's kind of fun to see if you can create your name, create a version of your name that works whether viewed 
uh, one direction or the other. So for instance, here is my name, Carl, which I've created in a way that it spells Carl both this way and this way. All right. So you might want to try that next time you're in a, in a boring meeting, see whether you can create an inversion based on your name. The question I want to ask you to think about is whether or not that's design. Is, our, is Scott Kim's graphic, this category of graphics he calls an inversion, is that design based on our definition in this course? So think about that question. Are Scott Kim's inversions design? Well, first of all, let me say that I'm not terribly hung up on the definition and you shouldn't be either. Really, we're just adopting a definition so that we can agree with each other about what we're talking about in this course, and so we can put some bounds on the activity that we're discussing. Um, my own personal view is that it probably is not design. That is, inversions are really Scott Kim's self-expression. I would consider that more in the category of art than in the category of design. But I can easily imagine a slight tweak to inversions that would make it very much design. So imagine that you were trying to design a label for a laptop computer that would be readable from either direction, and that was a graphic design challenge that you faced. In that case, there would be a clear gap, that is, there would be a problem to be solved, and the conception and giving form to an artifact to solve that problem would, in fact, be design. So that's my personal opinion. Again, don't get too hung up on it. I just wanted you to start thinking about where is the boundary of design? What's the distinction between design and art?